Well, good morning. Do you have the courage to think? That's what I'm asking you this morning. Do you have the courage to think? Because if you think, you can change, you can grow, you can become. And nothing, absolutely nothing, is a problem for your life. Do you have the courage to think? Now you'll say, oh, of course. We all think. You're thinking right now. We all have the opportunity to think. But what about the courage to be intentional with our thoughts? The courage to be intentional that says, I direct my thoughts in a key or specific direction. To be courageous about that. Because quite often it's very challenging in our life that we don't realize we're really afraid to use this beautiful key called intentional thinking or awareness or the awakening of our life to our highest and our best that thoughts might embrace us because quite often we're afraid of our own personal success. What would happen if you now move to another level, to a higher plane? Because quite often, sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm a little scared of that. I'm a little frightened of what that would be. That's going to change my whole status quo. What if I began to believe for all kinds of great things in my life? Well, I might have to give up this state of victimhood. I might have to give up this place of, of feeling sorry for myself. I might have to give up the idea that friends around me are supportive of me because of my situation. But what if I intentionally and was so courageous to believe for my highest and best and to use this key of the power of thought in our life? Let me tell you this. Thought is a powerful key. Scripture has said it in the ancient truth in saying, as a man or a woman thinks, so you are. This is Scripture teaching us. It's ancient from the Old Testament, yet it's been reiterated in all kinds of different ways throughout the New Testament, through the gospel lessons, through the writings of Paul, all unfolding for us this kind of consciousness about the power of our thought and inviting us to be courageous thinkers. And to start thinking intentionally. Not just letting any old thought come our way, not allowing just thoughts to fill the mind, but to be intentional with every day, every thought, everything that comes to mind, everything that we accept within our heart and our life. Now Jesus began to teach this as you look to the Sermon on the Mount, known as the Beatitudes. Let me tell you this, these are all power thoughts. That's right. Jesus was giving you power thoughts. From a higher level of consciousness, a mount, a higher level, a sermon on the mount. It doesn't sermon on the valley, it wasn't sermon in the lowlands, sermon in the gully. It was sermon on the mount, meaning sermon of a higher consciousness, a teaching of a higher awareness. This is a series of power thoughts for your life. Here's an example. It says blessed or translated happy or translated successful is the person and on goes the list of these different beatitudes or teachings. One might be, blessed is the one who is, or happy or successful is the one who is poor in spirit, for they'll inherit the kingdom of heaven. Poor being translated to mean emptied out of spirit. That which has released all crazy mind chatter going on in your head and emptied it out to say, I am now emptied out in spirit, and now I can welcome in all kinds of powerful thoughts. I can welcome in all kinds of stuff. I'm open, I'm ready, and I'm receptive. It now becomes an invitation. Jesus began to teach this as he shared this Sermon on the Mount, power thoughts for your life, things that you should go, hmm, I'm going to enhance my life with that teaching. I'm going to embrace that. I'm going to begin my day by being intentional and being poor in spirit, meaning emptied out in spirit of all else. All this kind of crazy mind chatter that goes in our head that fills our minds from day to day that people have deposited upon us. All kinds of thoughts. You know how it is. Someone will say something to you and it sort of clings to you, sticks to you. Maybe when you were a child, you remember someone saying, you're stupid, you're not able, you're not gifted, you're not talented. And you may know better, but something stuck to you and it kind of clinged to you, it grabbed onto you, and it got roots and took place in your subconscious that you began to believe that and welcome these kind of thoughts. Those who've got, struggled with identity, gender identity, or uh, understanding your sexual orientation in particular, you may have had all kinds of stuff dumped on you that makes you feel 
in some way less than, it kind of clings to you. It's stuff that's kind of gotten deep into your subconscious and you respond from that. We as people in our world today encounter lots of diversity. And because of that diversity, we may have felt in some way that we have embraced a thought given to us by our world that people are less than, not as good as, don't deserve equality, don't deserve a place at the table. And so that clings to us and it's like its roots have gotten into our subconscious. That's why Jesus was saying, here's a power thought for today. Begin by emptying it all out, releasing it. Oh, how powerful when we spend time doing a little house cleaning of the subconscious, going deep within and releasing those things that kind of clung to our thought process, that have been shaping our day and leading us in ways to be less than our highest and best. We do a little spiritual housekeeping. We go inside and go deep within on our prayer life and we release those things on a day-to-day basis. For this power of thought, the very power of thought lies in the realm of this subconscious place. And it is there rather than in this surface chatter that shapes and makes all the decisions because we do a lot of things from our subconscious, don't we? Without even thinking about it, we just do it because we thought it so many times before. And because we thought it so many times before, it's cycled through, it's taken root, it now shapes that which we respond and how we respond to all kinds of scenarios. So the key to connecting to this subconscious is to go within that dinner place Now, the Spirit of God has shared with us through the writings of the ancients, uh, through the New Testament, saying, go into your prayer closet, it says, and shut the door. And there you find, wait a minute, it's not telling us to create some sort of prayer closet, a room in your home, or a room in your church, or a closet in your workspace. But to go within is what it's talking about. That prayer closet is that place that you take with you everywhere you go. So we go within and we close the door. We shut out all else. And we become courageous in that moment to have intentional thoughts, to welcome the spirit of the divine, to welcome God unfolding in our lives. We go within and we take on this courage that says, I am going to believe, I'm going to claim, I'm going to speak my truth, I'm going to hold on to this very promise of God and echo it over and over again, no matter what the circumstances of the world around may be. I am intentional and courageous with my thinking. It is this mindful practice that soothes out this chatter. And we talk about mindfulness. A lot of times, oh, that's kind of, it's not a new age word. It's an ancient word. It's an ancient term. It's an ancient concept of meditation. We've been inviting you more and more in the journey of your spiritual growth here at City of Light to engage in a spirit of meditation. Engage in a time of quiet. Embracing that passage of scripture that says, be still and know that I am God. To spend this time centering where you're so dismissing all other thoughts in your consciousness. We've, over the years, had a program called Centering Prayer, where we invited people to sit in silence, and during that silence, to constantly dismiss mind chatter, but in that silence, to rest in peace and allowing the Spirit of God to speak to us, and maybe using some word or phrase that would help you recenter your life. You're sitting there in prayer, and oh, loving the wonderful presence of God, and oh, wait a minute, did I pay my bills? Oh, 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 wait a minute. Do I, who am I going to lunch with? Oh, wait a minute. And all these thoughts want to come into you, that mind chatter. And maybe you have a key word that just says it's love or peace or presence. Whatever it may be for you, helps you return back to that place and dismiss and release. Helps you to be mindful, aware, and be in this moment. How difficult it is to live this world where we're pulled into all other moments other than this one. And we kind of like to live that way. We're pulled into our past and we're worried about yesterday and all the things that went on there. We're pulled into our future and we're worried about what's going to happen there and concerned for tomorrow, what may unfold there. And we forget to live right here and now and be mindful of this moment and all the blessings that this moment has for us. It's important. Be still and knowing God is more than just knowing a divine presence. It's knowing this goodness of God that's there. Being still and being in that presence so much that you know all the character of the divinity of God. 
not as a human, not as a person, not as trying to be a being, but a, a wonderful, loving, I want to use the word energy, a loving presence, a divine essence that is there, and we begin to know it in such a beautiful way that we not only experience it, but we become it. We embrace it so much that this presence of the divine, this God, we become godlike in our nature, godlike in our thinking, godlike in our words, in our actions. Because what is so amazing is the power of this thought. This kind of thought is an astonishing energy. It will do something amazing within our life. And when we are intentional with it, when we are centered in God and so God-like, so embracing of this wonderful presence of love, our thoughts then that are so creative begin to unfold some amazing things in our world. I want to tell you this. The greatest power which you have is this power of intentional thought. It's a great power, underutilized, way underutilized. It's the power of faith. Faith says, I believe, this is what I know. Even though I don't see it, I believe it, I know it, I claim it, I speak it out. And intentional thought is saying the same thing. It's saying, I think these kind of thoughts. I think intentionally, today is a great day. I think intentionally, I am successful. I think intentionally, I am healed. I think intentionally, these, this particular way, this pathway of thinking. And that power begins to unfold for us. Because let me tell you this, there's something that we must learn as we think about our world today. Think about a corporation. A corporation is not a building, because a corporation could move to any other building, correct? Correct. A corporation is not its CEO because leaders can change, right? And there could be a different leader. So a corporation is not a building, it's not a CEO, and it's not even a product because a corporation isn't a product because what? A product could change and develop as well. What is a corporation? It's an intentional thought. What is a church? A church is not a building because a church can move to another building. Oh, I guess we have, haven't we? So a church can move to another building. A church can go to different places. A church doesn't even have to have a building to be a church. Church is not a pastor. A pastor can change. A pastor, you could have one pastor. You've down through the years of 46 years of this existence, you've had many pastors. Churches are not a pastor. They're not a building. And they're not even uh, a denomination because denominations can change. You can even be a, still be a church, but you, maybe you were Catholic and now you're Presbyterian. You could be part of a church that has embraced other denominations or becomes interdenominational. You see, what it is is an intentional idea, an intentional thought. I'm so proud of you all over the journey of your, um, the, the ministry of this congregation that you had intentional thoughts to create City of Light because your intentional thoughts open the doors to create, to manifest something amazing that we've created here. This is Georgia's largest, and yes, someone affirmed, this is Georgia's largest spiritual center of this type. There's not another one like it. People called me today, said uh, uh, this morning early, and they wanted to have a tour of the facility uh, on this upcoming weekend because they've never seen anything quite like it. Three stories of spiritual work going on seven days a week. Oh, there's other churches that may rent their space. We've seen examples of that as we encourage people to leverage their assets, even amongst all the denominations that we work with. But they've never seen this kind of intentional thinking around creating a spiritual center that opens the doors for all kinds of ministry to happen, not just Sundays, and not just led by one person, but open the doors for many people to participate and to be part of. It was intentional thinking that we create this name as we embrace city of light, meaning that we see this as a city, a community that's moving in the light and of the light. And how important it is that we embrace that because we see then the power of what happens when we're intentional. And if we get creative and if we get courageous with these thoughts, amazing things that can happen in our life. Let's just think for a minute. What would happen if we all went back to 1930 or the era of your parents? Some of that may be a little bit earlier for your parents. Think about that. If we all went back in time right now in this moment, well, you know what we'd be giving up? Cell phones, microwaves, color TV, TV in general for some of us, polyester, not so bad, that might be okay. But what is all of these things? 
What are all these things? They were ideas that were birthed out of intentional and creative thinking that says, I see God's goodness and I allow that goodness to be creative within me. And I intentionally think in that way. I intentionally think every single day about the goodness. Because let me tell you this, everything that's ever created comes from a thought. Someone thought about designing this chair. Someone thought about designing this uh, pulpit. Someone thought about designing this building. Thoughts created all of this. And those of us who engage and are courageous enough to be intentional with those thoughts open the doors for amazing things to happen within our world. For it takes courage to be engaged in centered thinking. This is a courage where you begin to think intentionally about the life you want to choose. This is the courage when you understand that the divine power within you can change any situation and circumstances. And it takes courage to think for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the world wants to think for you, doesn't it? I mean, turn the television on and they're telling you how to think all the time. They're telling you if you get this car, if you get this house, if you buy this product, whatever, you're going to be better. You're going to be sexier. You're going to be more successful. You're going to be more beautiful. You're going to fit in with society all the more. They're telling you how to think. And after a while, you buy into that thought process and you begin to think, I need this. I need this for my survival. And if I don't have this, something's wrong with me. What if we had the courage to think and to think for ourselves and to be intentional. I want you to say this with me. I'm not afraid to think. Say it out loud. I'm not afraid to think to become aware of my greatness, to become aware of my greatness. I'm not afraid. I'm going to be courageous and I'm going to step out and start thinking some intentional thoughts about the journey of my life and where I want to go and what I want to do. And a lot of times, oh, that's a little too much. Let's not go there. Oh, that's a little too big. Let's not go there. That might be too successful. Let's not go there. Why not? Why not? Isn't that what we're called to do? We are created to be creative beings, to share in creative thought, to be intentional within each one of our ideas. And as we said earlier, all these things, such as polyester, cell phones, color TV, They were birthed out of intentional thinking. Someone sang, hmm, I think this is possible. Now, it's always been impossible. Always been there. Do you know that? The intelligence to build anything has always been there and always will be. It's just we have to tap into it and engage this intentional thinking. You know? Because a lot of times we think, oh, something, something miraculous happened and someone became a genius. No. They just began to intentionally set the course of thought to believe for their highest and best. A lot of times we'll say, it's my circumstances, it's my situation. Do you understand all the world around me is determining my life? No, it is not. It's your thoughts. And whether or not you are courageous enough to think for your highest and best. Now, let me tell you this. God has all along been inviting you to think more courageously. More courageously than you've ever been thinking before. Down through time, that message has been echoed over and over again. Let's go to the text today that we read from the book of Genesis chapter 15, the story of Abram. Abram and his wife in great sorrow because they had no heir, no child. Getting up there in years, thinking this is just impossible. Now, isn't it wonderful that we have these lessons of people who also are just like us? who fall into the category of saying, I feel so sorry for myself because everything around me is impossible. And we begin to feel sorry for ourselves. And other people begin to feel sorry. I'm sorry, it's so impossible that you'll never be successful or you're never going to have a child or you're never going to do this or you're never going to have whatever your dream may be. And we find those people who echo that kind of thinking all around us. Abram, known as Abraham later, but Abram at this time in the story and the point of his life is now feeling this and the Spirit of God in his meditation, in his time, awakens and speaks to him, revealing this and says, this is what I want you to do. Go out in the night. I love that. In your darkest moment, in your time when your deepest despair, in the night of your life, 
when everything seems to be so discouraging and your world and you too believe all things are impossible or this ain't gonna never happen for your life. Go out there and begin to count the points of light that we call stars. Go out there and begin to count on them. Begin to take the courage and be intentional about each one. There's one, there's two, there's three, because what happens is every one of those stars, the Spirit says, is symbolic of your blessing, of your offspring, of your children. And you may not be able to even count them all. You may not even be able to comprehend all of them because when you get to 1,001, 1,002, it may shift and all of a sudden there's 2006 and 2000. Oh, 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 there's 3004. Oh my God, there's just so many. I don't know if I can count them all. And that's the message that happens when we're invited to shake off fear and negativity. negativity. Let me t- tell you this. We have a whole lot of shaking to do. Mm-hmm. And I think the great hymn of this church is Jerry Lee Lewis' song. You got a whole lot of shaking going on. Uh huh. I think we need to be singing that on a regular basis. Those words were, well, I said, shake, shake, baby, shake. I said, shake, baby, shake. I said, shake it, baby, shake it. And then shake, baby, shake. Come on over, a whole lot of shaking's going on. Now, what if we were that kind of church that says we're shaking off this negativity, we're shaking off this fear, we're shaking off all this idea of a possibility, we're going to shake, shake, shake. Come on. That's what it's all about. Now, if we were a shaken church and what we're called to be, think about what the world might say. There is no negativity in the midst of the consciousness of these people right here at City of Light. I want to be part of that. I want to be part of people who are intentional and courageous with their thoughts that every single day all they believe for and speak of and claim for their life is their highest and best. Ooh, let me tell you, there'd be a whole lot of shaking going on, not just in here, but in the world around us. We've come to church to hear something positive, yet sometimes we go to church and we like to hear something negative because I've had people say to me, I'd like you to preach a little more fear. You know, because we could pack the seats if we had a little more fear. If we spoke a little bit more hell and God's punishment and damnation, we could pack the seats. There'd be a lot more people in church today if they all were scared and frightened and fearful and believing that God was about with wrath to punish them at any moment and to sweep them away and take their life and leave them in hell and damnation. Woo! We could pack the house. But this church is about a lot of shaken Shaking off fear and negativity to understand love and divine presence within our lives. You come to church to feed that mind. That's why you come here. To feed your thought process. To feed your consciousness with truth, not negativity. Not fear, not doubt, not questioning, not wondering, not guilt, not shame, not self-hatred. None of that is the reason why we should be coming here. But we come to feed the mind with the power of intentional thinking that makes us courageous every single day to speak, to think, to claim, to let that be our voice all the time. We come here to hear the truth, the truth of God's blessings that says all things are possible. And so we become like Abram who we are called to, in our darkest night, sit there and begin to count the points of light, the points of blessing that are there for our lives, that are shown and revealed every single moment of our life. I have to ask you then, what is feeding your thoughts? Because I hope you're coming to church every Sunday, you're coming to classes, you're coming to be engaged in the spiritual community in here to feed your mind, to feed it with that wonderful power Because so often we want to dumb down our thinking to the lowest level and we are not even able to comprehend a sermon on the mount. We'd rather, you know, give us a sermon in the basement. Give us a sermon on the lowest level because we might get there because we have not allowed the moments for us to count the stars in the sky. Because let me tell you this, that whole text is asking you, what do you see? What do you see? Because what you see is your thoughts. Because what your thoughts are, you'll be able to see. 
If you think you can, you'll be able to see you can. If you begin to see in the sense of that this is a metaphor for your consciousness, your thinking, the Spirit of God is saying, look at the stars. What do you see? How many are out there? So is your thinking that way? How many amazing miracles are out there for me today? Wow. I didn't even think about that. I haven't even been that intentional, you might say. I haven't ever comprehended it in that way. Wow, there are so many you can't count them all. That's the message that is trying to share with us. Do you have the courage to think beyond where you are? To look from where you are at this place in your life? Because this is what the scripture says, so shall your seed be, so shall your blessing be, so shall your offspring be. As you begin to think from this perspective, wow so shall your blessings of each and every day will be. But if you see nothing, you get nothing. Isn't that true? If you see nothing, you get nothing. Because you will receive what you are aware of, what you are conscious of, what your intentional thoughts are centered on, what you are courageous enough to believe. What if you were courageous enough to believe I could get a master's degree, Anne Montgomery Sears? What if you're courageous enough to believe I can finalize my paper for the Emerson Theological Institute. And you are, because you believed it. You were intentional. She's a perfect example of this. Who wondered, is this even possible? Can I get through the Troward class? Can I even make it through the end? Right? She's a beautiful example. Talk to her personally, because she's someone who has been intentional, saying, I can. I can. I will. I'm going to graduate She's already uh, pictured herself in cap and gown with her master's degree in hand. When you are in that intentional thinking, that kind of way, you have already counted the stars, you've named them. You're courageous enough and you begin to start thinking very creatively because, again, you are made to be a creator and you need to create. I'm going to tell you this. God gives you all the raw stuff. I want to tell you, God did not make a car. Someone created the car. But God did give you all the materials to create the car. God gives you this wonderful universe. But God didn't say, you know what, I I created that beautiful cake for Easter uh, that Norma did so beautifully on. Did you see all that beautiful egg cake? It was an open egg. So creative, so wonderful. Did God create that? Norma created that. But God gave her all the gifts, all the things that she needed to be the creative spirit, the revelation of that. I want to tell you this. God has already given you all that you need. You just have to open your mind and be intentional about the thoughts, to be courageous about them, to say, I'm stepping out and believing for even more. I'm not waiting in any way, but I'm going to step out because I'm going to tell you this. You're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. Now, all of us are thinking, I'm waiting, oh, waiting on God to take me to the next level. God says, I'm, I'm already at the next level. Would you now step up to the next level? Because we're not waiting on God. God is waiting constantly on us because what do we know about Scripture teaching us? You have the choice. You have the power to choose. And if you're not choosing it, well, God's just waiting for you to make that choice. A lot of people have praying oh lord what should i wear today should i wear blue or pink or red what spirit what do you want me to wear do you think god cares god says it's your choice wear what you want to wear i mean do what you want oh but we're so religious oh we're so religious and we're just oh god you got to choose for me to you know show me what your choice is god says you choose I gave you the power to choose. If I'm going to choose everything for you, honey, you are going to Mongolia and you're going to be a minister, a missionary there. You're leaving tomorrow. I've already chosen for you. Now, and we say, wait a minute, that's not what I want to do. God says, that's right. It's your choice. You choose. Spirit of God has echoed over and over again. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. The choices are ours. If God's going to make all the choices for us, oh, honey, we'd all be in heaven right now. Oh, it would be wonderful. The only reason we're not is because we haven't made the choice. 
We haven't chose to rise to that kingdom of heaven in consciousness. We haven't chose to be courageous and intentional about our thinking enough to get there. So I want to encourage you to start to serve God with your mind. Woo! Because a lot of us are saying, oh, I need to serve the Lord with my talent, my hands. Ian does a beautiful job there. He gives his talent and shares it so gorgeously. Our musicians give of their voice and say, I'll serve God with my voice. Some people will say, I'll serve God with my skills and abilities. I want to tell you this. The Spirit of God is calling you to serve God with your mind, with your thinking. That's the basis being intentional about your consciousness, your thoughts every single day. I want you to do something and let's pray over those thoughts because some of those thoughts that you've been thinking, you need to let go of, you know? Some of those thoughts that get dumped on you, they're sticking on you and they're holding on to you and you've got to let go, you need to pray over those and release them. There's such a beautiful power of us understanding to release all kinds of things. Release those anger, release that negativity, release that judgment, release all those things that may see and judge things as good or bad. Release all that stuff over and over again that our thought life become elevated intentionally to a higher place. And I want, you know, a lot of times we're also so caught up in thinking about what other people think about ourselves. I'm gonna tell you this, don't worry about what other people think about you. Worry about what you think, not what others think. If we spent more time thinking and being concerned about our own thoughts rather than what others think about us or their thoughts about us, we will move so much faster to a higher plane of understanding because those thoughts become a reality. And aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that when you set forth in consciousness and in thought, when you begin to be intentional about the things that you think about that say, today I am healed. Today in prayer, my father is doing well as James has prayed and we prayed with him and we claimed in our thoughts were all intentional and courageous to believe for Jim's father to be doing well. And he's going to go see his dad, right? Uh, today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. And rejoice with him in his well-being because intentional, courageous thoughts unfold for us in that way. Aren't you glad that thoughts create your reality and that the power of your thinking and your consciousness has the power to create, to unfold for you exactly what you desire within your hearts and your lives? Noah, Moses, Joseph, Daniel, David, the disciples eventually learned that the courage to turn their thoughts over to spirit changed everything in their lives. The courage to just say, I turn my thoughts over to the divine, to the divine, that my thinking is the divine thinking. My thinking is God thoughts. I welcome the God thoughts. I welcome the presence of God in my consciousness. I welcome it in such a way. And as they awakened to this, they discovered with this courage to be courageous to say, in the midst of no matter what's happening, I'm in the lion's den, says Daniel. I am the courage to believe nothing will harm me. David faces Goliath and says, I have the courage to think I can slay the giant with a sling and one stone. Noah says the world around me is running in fear and evil and yet I'm going to build an ark and I have the courage to think that this boat will even float. I have the courage to be intentional to know that God is blessing me and the disciples the courage to believe that healing and the power of God would manifest and work through them. You see, in each case, they just said, I intentionally and courageously Turn it over to spirit. And all things are working together for my good. I'm going to teach you a little chorus that you can sing all day long. It's this. It's simply the words are, turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit and just smile all the rest of the day. There we go. We Turn it over to spirit. Well, just turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit and just smile all 
the rest of the day. You got it. Sing it again. Turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit and just smile all the rest of the day. All right. You're getting it. Let turn me it over to spirit. We're going to turn, turn it, it over to, to spirit. spirit. God, that Turn divine spirit. To spirit and just smile. Then you can smile because the people are the there, the knowing all things are going to be taken care of for good. Turn, Turn it over to spirit. spirit. Hold on one moment. I, wanted, I want us to understand what we're singing. Because when you're turning it over to spirit, and that is the divine, that is God, we've chosen that word specifically. Because sometimes we think I'm going to turn it over to God, this being outside of me. Oh, I'm going to throw it up to heaven, give it up to somebody else. When all of scripture says the spirit of God dwells within, it's spirit. We're turning it over to that power and presence that's within you. It's already there that you've been created in. And you can smile. That's right. Why do we smile? Because ah, we're at peace. We're in joy. We know it's all taken care of, don't we? We just smile. And we just smile because oh, I'm happy. I know all good is coming. I'm intentional. So when we turn it over to spirit, every one of these examples, David, Daniel, Noah, the disciples, on goes the list. When they did just that, they could smile. I have to believe. I can picture Daniel standing in the lion's den. A little smirk on his face. A little smile. I can see David picking up that stone with a little smile, saying, I know I'm going to slay that Goliath. I can see each one of these cases, each one of these biblical stories uh, unfolding with this sort of smile of the heart because they've already turned it over courageously and intentionally in mind to claim all things are working together for good. Now, come sing it with me. Come on, voices of celebration. Come on up here and sing it together. Lead us. Everybody stand up and let's sing it together. Turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit and just smile all the rest of the day. Turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit and just smile. All the rest of the day Turn it over to spirit Turn it over to spirit Turn it over to spirit And just smile All the rest of the day All the rest of the day All the rest of the day all the rest of the day. All right, give yourself a hand.